in this space. Beginning to allow sounds into your awareness. Perhaps birds singing outside the window. Or traffic passing on the street below. Allowing all sounds in all part of this moment, this experience. You feel the temperature of the air on your skin. And the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. Notice the weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes. Checking in for any places of tightness or sensitivity. Any restlessness or fidgeting. And taking note to work into these spaces that call out for you throughout your practice here today. And shifting the awareness from Anamaya Kosha, the body, to Pranamaya Kosha, the energetic level. Notice where you are at this moment on a scale of one to 10. One being exhausted, fatigued, ready to crawl back into bed. 10 being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still. bringing the attention to the breath. No need to change it, just observe inhalations, exhalations, and whatever space in between. And awareness comes up to Manamaya Kosha, the mind. And we'll just allow thoughts and feelings to arise freely without engaging with them, like an image being projected on a screen. The story goes on without our input. Notice what are the quality of the thoughts this morning, today. 
do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they ruminating on the past or attempting to predict the future? Not good or bad, not right or wrong, just something to notice. We'll bring that awareness back down to the breath. This time actively expanding the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. And every exhale lets something more go. Inhales fill belly like a balloon inflating, expanding. Exhales, release belly button towards spine, deflating. Inhale, fills belly and ribs expand. Exhale, releases ribs and belly. Inhale, fills belly, ribs and chest. Air filling all the way up to the collarbones. Exhale, releasing chest, ribs, belly. Continuing like this, inhaling from bottom to top in three parts. And exhaling top to bottom in three parts. You need to familiarize yourself with the muscles that control the belly, the ribs, the chest. This three-part breath is called Dirga Pranayam, D-I-R-G-H-A. This three-part breath helps calm our nervous systems out of fight or flight sympathetic mode into rest and digest parasympathetic mode. It helps build relationship with the breath so that we can hone the muscles that control it. On your next exhale, release any effort from the breath, returning to a natural pace. We'll bring our hands to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. No space between the fingers and the thumbs are pressing into sternum. Consider here setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. It might be the sankalpa, the heart's desire that you've been working with all month, you've been working on together, or something new might inspire you today. If it's your first time setting an intention for class, the invitation is to make it present and positive. So it's kind of like your reason for being here today. It might sound like something like, I flow through life with ease and grace, or I am patient, I am strong, I am healing. Affirmations work really well for, for uh, class intentions. And we'll seal that intention with the sound of OM. Invitation to chant alongside me. 
First, there's a cleansing breath. hands to release to your lap, chin drops towards chest, and an inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Good morning, John, Facebook, great to see you, namaste, chin through chest and left ear towards left shoulder. So I'm just allowing my head to gently roll side to side, bring some movement back into the body after that stillness practice. And the next time the head rolls through center, bring it up to neutral. Roll the shoulders forward. Your eyes can still be closed for this part. There's really no wrong way of doing it. We're just uh, waking up the body head to toe. Nice and easy. Change directions in the shoulders. So kind of looking for any clicks or cracks, any tightness or pinching. I'm just kind of doing a full body diagnostic here. And seeing what's going on. Nothing's good or bad. It's just information. So that we can more compassionately choose how we'd like to move going forward. and then releasing the shoulders. We'll, hands are nice and gentle on the knees. We'll bring the chest forward to the right, like you're hitting, uh, what is this, three o'clock on an analog clock. Back, rounding the spine, and to the left, like you're hitting nine o'clock. Chest forward, so I'm arching the spine to the right, back, rounding the spine, and to the left. I'm gonna smooth that out now, like making a circle instead of a square. Still trying to hit all of those points. Just starting to wake up the hips and the rest of the spine. Moving nice and slow, just getting to the edges of that range of motion. And then let that circle become smaller and smaller like a spiral to center. And chest comes forward, arching the spine to the left, back rounded to the right and forward. Chest goes left, back and rounded, to the right, and forward. Now we're going to smooth that out into a nice big circle. Still trying to hit all four corners. So yeah, especially early in class, a lot of what we do is more inspired from other movement practices that I've studied. So this is how you learn <laughs> certain moves in belly dance. Um, 
but I found that it really helped my yoga practice. So I just like bringing that into. That's why not everything that we do here has a specific Sanskrit like, yoga name. You know, when you hear those like yoga words, yoga words like Namaste or um, Vrikshasana, all of those, those are Sanskrit. And this yoga comes from India. So I bring in some other movement practices here, um, as well as some functional movement, some primal movement, um, some resiliency work, even some pole dance, pole dancing training that I um, that I found help my yoga practice. So, in case you're wondering, <laughs> all right, we'll bring it back to center where uh, where all these movements come from. So we're back. In the middle here, beautiful. Let's bring the legs out in front. Toes spread and close <laughs> and scrunch. And roll out the ankles. Just waking up the lower legs here. Change directions. <clears throat> And then let's bend in the knees, <clears throat> feet come nice and wide, and we'll drop the knees side to side. And the next time the knees fall over to the right, bringing the right hand in and close to the right hip, left arm sweeps up, and the hips rise, chest opens. Big circle with this left arm, just working into the shoulder. And we're just working to lift the chest, lift the hips. Knee, uh, hips come down to the ground. Oh, we'll drop the knees over to the left. Left hand close to the left hip for support. And we rise up through the hips and the chest. Big circles with this right arm. hips release down, knees over to the right, we're going to connect this just one breath or half a breath to each movement. So inhale sweeps you open to lift, exhale sweeps you down to change sides. Inhale lift, open, exhale down, change sides. We've got one more on each side here. And coming back, the knees fall over to the right. We'll bring the hands to frame that knee and come into tabletop pose. Gonna have to adjust a little bit. Let me see. <laughs> Change to the right. Okay, so we're coming into tabletop pose. That ohm. That ohm chanting. Okay. Also, it's been cold here. So. All right. Are you not charging? Hands under shoulders. There we go. Good morning, Oya Hydrangea. Welcome, welcome. All right. Hands under shoulders, knees below hips. And inhale, belly drops, hips and chest rise for our Cat pose, uh, cow pose, and exhaling round in the spine, chin tucks in towards chest, pressing the ground away. Inhale, opens up front side body, so we're just matching the speed of the body to the length of the breath. And in this exhale, fingers are spread wide into our cat pose, the tops of the feet, the shoelace part of the feet presses into the ground so hard, Hi, Urban Queen. Good morning. Uh, we lift the knees. So that might just be an inch or two, 
or rounding in the spine, that might be actually quite high. Depends how flexible your feet are. Don't roll to the outsides of the ankles. Nope. They stay in alignment. We're stretching out the very front parts of the ankles and foot. Gently release down. Don't let it slam down. Inhale through cow. Exhale through cat. Pressing the feet into the ground so hard that the knees lift. Following your breath here, we've got two more like this. Calibrating breath and body. And gently the knees touch down. You can roll out the ankles a bit or some people like tapping out the feet. I don't love that but it's it's fine for your body and like some people feel like it feels really good. Okay a little bit uh no let's do this instead. So let's take the left arm and it sweeps up overhead reaching towards the sky. Exhale weave the arm through reaching through but don't land we're going to open right back up again. Inhale, reaching towards the sky, chest opens. Exhale, weaving through, reaching through. Once more, inhale, rise up. Exhale, weave it through, this time landing the shoulder and the side of the head onto the ground. Hips stay over the knees. Don't let them come forward or back. 90 degrees, knee and thigh. This left hand, sorry, this right hand is pressing into the ground, keeping the right shoulder up over the left shoulder. So I'm keeping my chest open towards you, towards the long side of the mat. So there's a twisting going on here. The bottom arms pressed into the ground, stronger or softer, like a kickstand locating where the nicest stretch on that shoulder blade is. So it's not like the more pressure, the more advanced the pose. Like, no, it's like you're looking for triangulating where that stretch is most valuable to you in the shoulder blade, perhaps in the neck, pending where you feel this, this, uh, this stretch. Maybe that right hand reaches forward and up. That feels best for me because then I'm getting a stretch here as well, like underneath my right shoulder blade, right ribs, um, but it's not necessary. It's like just another option for the hands. Another option to play here, the right leg extends straight. So same side of the arm that's forward or on top, that leg goes back. You can press back a little bit here to get a bit of a calf stretch. If you're not feeling a calf stretch, Try straightening your leg up even more and pressing the heel back like it's going to touch the floor. Maybe you decide to point the toes and let the foot begin to levitate up off the floor. Super slow motion cannot emphasize enough how much momentum is not your friend here. So it's like moving through honey. Taking your time. And all the while, this is in service of that bottom left shoulder. That's really what we want to get nice and stretched out here. The twist is nice too. But we have less of a twist if you left. If you lift the um, leg, you're gonna have less of a twist, so you get less of the benefits in the lower back, but you do get to play with a little bit of balance early in class, which can be fun. So we've got one more breath here. Gently release the foot down in reverse. So the toes touch down, knee touches down, hand comes in front of the face, left arm sweeps open towards the sky, and release that hand to the mat. I'm going to turn around so that I can continue facing you. Um, I'm down, but 
you can say in the same direction. Is here we will take the right arm and let it sweep up towards the sky with a deep breath in. Exhale, weave the arm through, not touching down. Inhale, arm sweep up overhead. Exhale, reach and twist. Inhale, open. And exhale, twist and land, thread the needle pose. Side of the head and shoulder release onto the ground. I'm using my left hand, the top hand, to press into the ground and keep the chest open to the best of my ability over the, uh, towards the long side of the mat. Hips stay over knees the entire time. We're keeping that 90 degree angle. So I'm just locating where the nicest, uh, most satisfying uh, stretch is in the shoulder blade by changing the pressure on my bottom arm. Maybe this top left hand reaches up overhead for a stretch. And yeah, the hand can be flat, palm pressing into the ground. I like cheating, this shag rug is everything. I just like grip onto it for even more uh, grip and leverage. But uh, in class, I would usually just grab the end of my mat. Play with that balance, stretch out this uh, left leg to begin. And first, let's just give that calf an equal stretch as we did on the other side. So it's just a little bit of dynamic stretching. I'm not uh, going to the deepest stretch of my life here with my calf muscle. I'm just going back and forth right to the edge and then letting off a little bit. And to play with balance, I'll just point the toes. I don't even lift the leg, I'm just pointing the toes. And my foot's levitating off the ground. See how that feels on my body. And slowly it lifts up. Still, we're multitasking, we're breathing here, never letting off the breath. When the breath ends, the pose ends. So if you go too far here, it's not the end of the world. Uh, maybe you've already discovered this, but you'll just roll onto your butt. So you'll just like fall back that way and it's okay. <laughs> just begin again, just get into the pose again. Balancing poses, half the lessons in balancing poses are, are uh, learned falling out of them, right? All right, so we're gonna gently release, well, let's do one more breath here. Gently release in reverse, floating the foot down. Knee touches down. Left hand comes in front of the face and right arm sweeps the arm open and hand comes down to touch. Okay. And I just work on some wrist resiliency. I just want to bring in a little wrist resiliency every day this week instead of doing it all on one day. So we're gonna turn the hand. So pinkies go out and then back so that fingertips are facing the knees. And then do the same with the other hand. So I'm turning out and back. So I'm just in my regular tabletop pose, shoulders over wrists, knees below hips with fingers facing back. Yeah? My fingers are spread as wide as they can, nice wide base, and my palms are never gonna leave the ground. Maybe you're already like, oh yeah, this is already a deep, deep stretch, awesome. We're gonna just gently rock back, not using momentum, and forth. Back to neutral. You can tuck the toes under if that feels better for the knees. It's all good. So there's no, goal or stopping point or anything like that. It's like you just need to connect with your own or you get to connect with your own body about where that edge is. And we're not snapping back and forth. This is like 
not even, this is super, super slow motion. If you're connecting it with the breath, let it be like a whole breath back, a whole breath forward kind of deal. Shoulders stay relaxed away. There's no comparison, like there's no um, prize in having the most flexible wrists ever or anything like that. But uh, why are we doing this? We're doing this because I know a bunch of you are artists and gamers and coders and most of us are doom scrollers. So if you spend all of your time doing all these uh, repetitive actions with your hands, you're at higher risk for carpal tunnel. And, you know, our wrists are incredibly important to the functioning of our hands in which we create things. So, goddess forbid we fall, hello winter, um, and land on our hands. We want to do everything we can to help avoid any breaking or spraining. All right, the next time you lean back, Remember, the palms don't leave the ground. So like, I could keep going here, but my palms are gonna peel up off the ground. I wanna avoid that. We're gonna hold it and take two deep breaths. So this should be incredibly intense for you, but not sharp and painful. It can hurt without being, without taking your breath away. So I'm probably at like an eight out of 10. It's intense. I'm not about to start crying, but I have seen people cry in this pose. So we just got one more breath here. We'll bring the shoulders back up over the wrists. On twist one, on twist the other, toes tuck under and sit the hips back on the heels. Now we're stretching out the feet. All right, let's give our wrists some love. So I just like squishing up from my forearms to kind of get blood back into the wrists. A little wrist massage to the hands. Fingers can interlace. And then just making like a infinity, like a figure eight. Change directions. Shake off water really gently, really gently. Awesome. And coming back to our tabletop pose, uh, right foot takes a step forward, left foot takes a step forward. We're gonna heel toe the feet out to the edges of the mat, bending one knee and then the other. We already kind of started warming up the, the legs. Give the head a nod, yes. Shake, no. And grab opposite elbows, creating a frame for the head for ragdoll. Giving your body just a sway side to side. Maybe a bob forward and back, and the knees are as bent or straight as feels good for you. Just letting the weight of your top side body, top half, help stretch out your back side body. Hamstrings, back. And coming back to center, bend the knees, heel toe the feet together, big toes come to touch, a little space between the heels so the ankles don't knock together. And inhale, halfway lift, legs straighten, hands come onto the shins, crown of the head towards the wall in front, tailbone towards the wall behind, like making the number seven with your body, deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale brings you all the way up to stand. And like a Jefferson curl, we're going to roll up one vertebra at a time. Letting the arms hang heavy. 
as the head comes up, heavy head comes up last, arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart, center. Better, better. Cool. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead, head tilts back to follow the hands. Full body stretch. Exhale, forward fold. Hands come down through heart center. A little bend in the knees to protect the lower back is fine here. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down to the ground. We'll take a step back with the right foot, step it back, and then out to the right. So it's a nice wide stance. So my left foot's towards the left edge, my right foot towards the right edge. If they're not touching the edges, but that's the direction. Left knee bends over left ankle. And I drop the right heel so that my right foot is better. My right foot is at a 45 degree angle. Almost like it's reaching towards that front uh, right corner of the mat. And then we'll press up to stand. You can use that leg as a as a step or sweep the arms up forward. So it's like just the right amount of momentum, right? So just starting to play with that a little. The hands release down onto the hips for warrior one. So checking in with the hips. Um, tendency is that the right hip's gonna drop and pull back, the left hip will have pulled forward. And instead we wanna keep them level. Pull the left hip back, press the right hip forward. So if there were strings attached to your, I think they call your ilium crest, your hip bones, to the wall in front of you, both strings would be the same distance. Yeah? And then arms come up overhead. Exhale, shoulders melt away from the ears. Warrior one. Hands can release down by the sides and fingers interlace behind you. Like you're holding your own hand. If this movement is not available to you, like Grabbing the hands is not is not a thing. You can either put a strap like a belt between your hands, or you can just bring your hands straight behind you, uh, palms facing one another, and then they just close into fists like like Superman behind you. And the shoulder blades are squeezing together like you're holding a pencil between them, and you're still gonna get plenty of benefit. All right. If your hands are touching or your fingers are interlaced. Next step would be getting your palms to touch. So I'm squeezing my hands together. Yeah? And the knuckles, it's like they're pressing down towards the ground below you to help pull the shoulders down and back. Chest is nice and open. And you can even pull them down a bit more, lifting the chest towards the sky for a bit of a back bend. Deep breath in here. And then an exhale, slow motion. We're gonna wave down, belly, chest, head. The chest might even land on that left thigh. Let the head hang heavy, or it's nose towards toes if that feels better for your neck. And the arms reach up, maybe even over. Really more so they're reaching up towards the sky. You'll know if you have a little bit more space. And then notice if to get there you had to untouch your palms if they were touching in the first place and just see touching if they were touching in the first place then and just move it back at you know back a, a degree to where you can still keep your palms in contact if you couldn't get your palms in contact in the first place then don't worry about that detail this is called humble warrior say you've been here before or you are curious as to what is quote unquote next. What you could do is drop the left shoulder inside the left knee. So, different angle. Here we are. Belly and uh, chest on top of the thigh. The next thing is that the shoulder comes to the inside. Shoulder comes to the inside of the knee. The knee's pressing to the shoulder. Shoulder's pressing into the knee for some stability. And we're bowing down here. Okay. Breathing fully here. Alex Becker, those are some cool leggings. Ah, thank you. They were a gift from my aunt. She, yep. Cool. 
M9, that's awesome. Humble Warrior, never tried that before. Yeah, um, for everyone who's still in here, yes, we're still in here. We've got another breath. Um, it's really good on the shoulders. You get that nice hip stretch too. To come out, option to release the hands for a challenge. Keep them together as you roll back up to this warrior one. Release the arms, give the shoulders a stretch. We'll straighten out this left leg. So now feet are pressed into the ground. Front leg is straight. I squeeze the front thigh so that the knee locks into place. I'll inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, hinge over hips. So the hands can come onto the hips so that there's less weight on that knee and it's almost like a halfway lift. Tailbone's pressing towards the back wall, crown of the head is reaching towards the front wall. Left hip's really pressing back, so you should feel a deep stretch in the back of the left leg. And bend in that knee, back to warrior one, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, hands down to the ground. Left foot steps back. We find ourselves in plank pose. Straight line from the heels to the crown of the head here. M9, it's nice to have you in class. Glad you're here. All right. We're shifting forward onto the tiptoes. Shoulders go just past the wrists. And option to lower the knees here. Either way, we're bending in the elbows, dropping halfway down. Then everyone's knees Chin, chest, touch down, and press it down to flat. Hands are below the shoulders, hips are pressed into the ground, squeezing the glutes, and the tops of the feet, shoelace part of the feet, press into the ground. We'll inhale into our Bhujangasana Cobra pose. So this is like a low cobra, um, just lifting the chest and shoulders, barely using any hand strength at all. Shoulders pulled away from the ears. Another deep breath here. And head releases down, toes tuck under, and hips press up high. Downward facing dog. Find our spacing here. And we'll be pedaling out the feet. I need some stillness. The heels are pressing down towards the ground. It doesn't matter whether they're touching or not. Hips are pressed up and back towards where the back wall meets the ceiling. Eyes are open between the toes or gaze between the knees. Letting the head and chest be heavy. Giving the shoulders a stretch. Trying to create one long line of energy from wrist to the hips. If you find yourself broken in that line, you might create an angle here. Send the hips up and back. If you've gone as far as you can and you're still here, bend in the knees. It's going to give you a little bit more uh, space to play with. Try to bring your belly towards your thighs, and that's going to straighten out that uh, shoulder angle. And then right leg sweeps up and back behind you. Toes point towards the wall behind you. And then looking up between the hands, you're just going to step the right foot up. Right knee over right ankle. Drop the left heel down and just walk the feet out so that they're nice and wide. The uh, wide stance. Right foot towards right side of the mat, left foot towards left side of the mat. It's not going to be as far as your low lunge. This is a closer, uh, closer stance. Mm -hmm. We're coming up for warrior one. However you get there is just great. Shoulders melt away from the ears and hands come onto the hips. Now we're going to have a um, tendency to have the right hip pulled forward, left hip pulled back. So we just want to even it out. Right, right hip pulls back, left hip presses forward. Hips are the same distance from the wall in front of us. Mm -hmm. Let's adjust the spacing. And arms come up overhead, we are Badrasana 1. Shoulders melt away from the ears. 
the hands can release back behind the body. Fingers interlace. And now we're gonna change the interlace. So, say this is your natural interlace with your right finger on top, left finger comes on top. It's gonna feel awkward. It's okay. Yes. So we're in that non-dominant finger interlace. Alternately, you have a strap between or tie or a rope between your hands or your hands are just straight back like Superman arms, right? Shoulders pulled down and away, chest is opening, fingertips towards the floor. So with that awkward interlace, right, that opposite interlace, we're creating new pathways in the brain. It's really good to do things with your non-dominant hand. So you have to practice that a little bit today. Another deep breath in really opens up front side body, maybe even looking up towards the sky for a bit of a balance challenge. And exhale, we wave forward. Belly, chest, head. You can land the body on top of the right thigh to begin with. And then the arms are reaching up towards the sky. It doesn't matter if the arms go vertical or not. You stop where your shoulders are like, Okay, we're getting a nice deep stretch. Great. And see if you can keep those palms glued together. Head might feel good to let it hang heavy. And if it doesn't, just keep staring down at the floor. So keep an engagement in the cervical spine, in the neck. If you want to play with that um, inner knee, outer shoulder kind of press, you just drop the body to the inside and press the shoulder into the knee. If you're here and your butt has gone all the way to the right, just bring it back into alignment. We're still trying to keep the hips square. So using the fulcrum of the knee and shoulder press to keep the hips square. We're just breathing here in Humble Warrior. It's a bit of an inversion. So we're just gonna move nice and slowly afterwards, but we've still got another couple breaths. to come out, option to release the hands, not pressing into that front leg, we come back up to warrior one. Release the fingers and roll out the shoulders. Yep, yep, new pathways needed. <laughs> new pathways in the brain. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing with the plasticity of the brain. Hands come onto the hips, we'll straighten out that front right leg. Hips are square, deep breath in, get tall. Squeeze the muscles of the right thigh so much that the knee lifts. Being held in place and we hinge forward from the hips, crown of the head towards the front wall, uh, tail going towards the back wall. So if you are uh, biologically, if you have like like women's hormones, like if you go through a cycle, it turns out that your menstrual cycle actually opens up more pathways between the left and right side of the brain. Um, so that's like a really good time to problem solve. Um, not me throwing shade at anybody who doesn't who doesn't menstruate. Uh, just a little shout out, a little shout out to uh, how the brain changes on a weekly, monthly, daily cycle. We're breathing here, the back of the right side leg is engaged, is being stretched. So it's like a half pyramid pose, Ardha Parsvottanasana. Bend in the right knee, arms sweep up overhead, deep breath in, warrior one. Exhale, hands come down to the ground and left foot steps up to meet right. Inhale, halfway lift, big toes come to touch. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, brings you all the way up to stand. Arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Nice. Inhaling, arms sweep up overhead. 
actually let's do tree posts today. I just changed my mind about the balance pose because I just remembered that I told you guys to get blankets for later and I want to get to that pose. So time management skills. <laughs> Hands come onto the hips. We're just gonna let's just roll out the right ankle for a moment here. Just to recalibrate. Yep. All's well. Let this right knee open out to the side, and we're just gonna bring that foot in to the left ankle. Sorry, I know that I'm opposite of you, but now that I've started, I'm just gonna keep going that way, it makes sense. And then the left foot might even come up to the calf, so the arch of the foot can come onto the arch, that round uh, bit of muscle on the calf. Very tempting to bring the foot to the knee, but we're going to avoid that so we don't do any ACL damage, any like unnecessary pressure on the knee. The hands on the hips, just notice, has your left hip drop down. Just bring it back into place. Squeezing the glutes will help keep open that thigh. So we want the thigh open. So if, from the sides, like you're between two panes of glass. We're not letting the knee come forward or anything like that. Maybe the foot can come up to the inner thigh, so you can play with that. If you're like, how is, how is your foot even staying up there? The knee stays open, step one. And the foot presses into the thigh, thigh presses into the foot. How do we do that? We press the hips forward. So there's a squeeze of the glutes, a pressing of the hips forward. We practiced this when we were in our cobra pose. Squeezing the glutes, pressing the hips into the ground, it's the same idea, it's just like inception, it's gone from para, uh, you know, uh, horizontal to vertical. Muscle engagement's the same. Vrikshasana tree pose. Hands might be at heart center. You can stay on the leg holding it up. But don't hunch over. Yeah. Nice tall chest. And we'll change sides. Slowly releasing this right foot to the ground. Avoid the temptation, or the temptation can be there, but don't immediately shake out the right leg, right? That standing leg. Just give it a moment. Just notice, like, oh, I want to shake it out. Okay. And here we'll roll out the foot. So we want to do things. It's not like we want to stop doing everything. We're just trying to do more intentionally. So you're like choosing to do something instead of being on autopilot. We'll let that right knee open out to the side and drag the foot in towards the ankle. Foot can even float up to that inner calf, but still the leg is engaged. The hips are square, we're not letting the right hip drop down. Like there's a string pulling you up from the crown of your head. Maybe you're playing with pulling that foot up towards the inner thigh. Hips pressing forward, knee pressing back. Foot and leg squeeze tight together. Tension is often what holds you in these postures, especially balancing poses. So it can feel like a whole lot of weight's pressing into that bottom foot. And in a way, there is like your whole weight, but the feeling can really change when we bring some pressure into another part of the body. So it might be an elbow and knee hook, shoulder and knee, like we were in that last pose, the in pyramid pose, right in half pyramid, or rather in humble warrior, correct myself. Um, so as we bring in pressure to other parts, it alleviates some of the tension, some of the weight, or perceived weight, I should say. Perceived weight, actual effort um, in the rest of our bodies. So we just got another breath here in Vrikshasana tree pose. And we'll release in reverse, nice and gentle, just floating that foot down, taking a moment. And then we'll go ahead and shake it out. Shake out the leg. Start. Getting whole body to shake. You can see Lucy's tail. She's just watching me with her tail wagging in the corner. So we're just starting our lymphatic 
shake a part of class to the shoulders rise and drop, rise and drop, and shake out the hands. So the whole body is just getting a nice big shake here. You can bring like actual hops into it, just letting your whole body flop. Alternately, you can lift up the heels and drop them to the ground, landing with soft knees, just letting that jiggle kind of reverberate. So just picking up the pace a bit, you're feeling a bit, anytime I feel like, oh, I don't want to do this, just pick up the pace, like times two, times three, to just get it started, and then your body kind of automatically starts doing it. If you've been breathing in and out through your nose this whole time, now you can let it go, let some audible sighs go, and you can start breathing through the mouth as well. <sighs> Take up some space. <sighs> Shaking is relaxing. Yeah, in a weird way, it really can be. <sighs> there are workshops and seminars where you just do this with like, well, it used to be like a hundred other people, but Obviously not now, uh, and you would just do, you can just do this for like three hours, and just like go into a trance, and just like cry and release trauma. But anyway, we're not gonna do that right now. Well, maybe we are, but like not for three hours. So we're gonna go into our breath of joy, breathing exercise here, to release some anger or whatever pent up emotion you've got going on. Maybe that pent up emotion is joy like plot twist it's called breath of joy what what shows up for me is always like anger so let me not project that onto you guys so <laughs> feet nice and wide it's a four-part breath yeah similar it's like ecstatic dance uh very similar communities they overlap often all right so inhaling a third of your lung capacity in arms sweep forward inhale a third of your lung capacity in arms sweep out Three hours, Alex. Yeah, <laughs> there's shorter ones, like 45 minutes, but even that, right? And then the last third of your lung capacity in, arms sweep forward, giant exhale, ha, out, and the arms sweep back. So, it looks like, in, through the nose, no exhale, in, out, or rather, in, in, and then a big ha, arms sweep back, belly towards the thighs, doesn't matter if they touch. In, 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 ha. Yeah, we got 10 of those. In, 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 ha. In, 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 ha. In, in, in. haven't joined in yet, this is your chance. Ha! Ha! Last one, make it count. Ha! <sighs> All right. Legs come nice and wide. Hand comes to the heart, hand comes to the belly, eyes can close. Let's just take a moment here to arrive, to see what was created. Perhaps a rise in heart rate, rise in body temperature. What else? A 
eyes can close. That's comfortable for you. Just allowing for that little natural sway as your feet calibrate. And what shows up for you when you let yourself go, when you let yourself yell, when you let yourself breathe. We'll gently blink open the eyes. You can take a moment here, take a sip of water. Towel off any sweat. Probably drink actual water. Okay, if you're on the ground, stay there, we'll meet you. If you're not, oh, you can come down with me. You can stay loose. You don't have to go, big girl. All right. Cool. Come to the end of the mat. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. And then exhale, bend in the knees deep, 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 so deep. You come down to seated. Okay. Okay, so here when. Okay. <laughs> Bring the legs out in front. And then I'm just going to bring my feet forward a bit so I'm kind of like dragging my butt a little bit so that like the squishy part stays back behind with a little bit of an an uh, anterior tilt. I'm going to bring the left foot to the outside of the right knee. Left hand on the ground close to my lower back. Right arm sweeps up on the inhale. And exhale, hook the elbow with the knee. If that reach doesn't work for you, you can just hug the knee. Okay, using whatever, can, yes, using whatever connection I've got with the knee and elbow there to press the left shoulder back, opening the chest towards that side wall. So, Matsyandrasana, seated twist. Good, loving dog out, yeah. Lucy is, she's like always in the room, she's just not always in frame. She likes the chanting. And also we hang out together all day, so. So, like a spiral staircase, the lower back, middle back, upper back, shoulders are twisting to the left. So a lift and a twist. Even through the contortion of the pose, we're finding new areas of the body to breathe into. So we're still having our full, long breaths. We'll gently release through center. Both hands come to land on the right side. Nope. I'm not twisting, I'm not like pressing or anything here. I'm just taking a breath in this counter twist. And that leg extends, right knee bends, foot comes to the outside of the left leg. Right hand comes onto the ground, close to the lower back, left arm sweeps up on the inhale. Exhale, elbow lands on the outside of that knee, or hug the knee. And using that press to pull the right shoulder back opening the chest towards the side wall. Starting from the base of the spine, we twist lower back, middle back, 
upper back and shoulders. I'm not even worrying about the neck, like I could look over my right shoulder and it would look prettier for a picture, but this isn't so much about the neck, it's about the spine between the bottom of the neck and the pelvis. And I want to focus on the lumbar and transverse spine here. So I'm breathing fully here. There's like a string attached to the crown of my head, reaching towards the sky. Every inhale finds length and height. Every exhale deepens the twist. It doesn't have to be dramatic or perceptible. You can feel it more so than it can be seen. Matsi and Jackson is spinal twist. Then we release back through center. Hands come to the opposite side. We just give a breath in the counter twist, in the opposite direction. Beautiful, okay. So if you have your blankets or your towels, like we mentioned earlier, now is the time to grab them. How am I gonna do this with you, boo? Okay. And then we're gonna Eat. So, I have it folded to about this shape. So whatever you have to do to get your prop to about this shape, a rectangle, okay? Then I'm gonna roll this rectangle into a Swiss roll. The Swiss roll, if you're not, excuse me, Swiss roll, if you don't watch a great British baking show, is the long ways, like hot dog ways, right? Okay. Oh, cat, cat apocalypse raiding. Hello, raiders. Welcome, welcome. You're just in time for a restorative part of, uh, of class. So we're rolling our blankets into a Swiss roll, kind of a shape. And we're gonna place it behind. So I'm seated in this direction and maybe two fist distances. Just two fist distances from my hips to the blanket, okay? This could also be another rolled yoga mat if that's easier for you or more accessible. Um, Alex on Facebook, thought you were gonna make him a spot to lay. Uh, oh, Lucy, oh, she lays wherever she wants every time. Hello, zombie chicken. Welcome, welcome. So we're just about to go into a supported reclining fish pose. So I have my knees bent. I'm going to lower down one elbow and then the other. So the goal here with the placement is that the head still lands on the prop. This is not really touching my lower back. See, it's all about the center and upper back. Okay, I'm bringing my feet uh, wide, uh, letting the knees knock together and just giving a little lift to the hips so the lower back has a bit more space between it. Head can be straight up towards the sky, that way it doesn't roll off the, the mat in either direction, and the arms open up like the letter T. This is the, this is like the important part. Palms are face up towards the sky. This allows the chest to open up. We want the shoulder blades melting off the sides of the prop. And then option here with the legs, you know your hips, or if you don't, you can experiment and see which one you prefer. This is broken bridge with the knees. Alternately, you can bring the feet together and allow the knees to splay open to the side. Baddha Konasana, Supta Baddha Konasana, supine bound angle pose, like making a diamond with the legs. So supported fish pose or just letting every exhale melt your body even more. It's a nice gentle chest and front side body opener. You can close your eyes here. Yeah. 
And every exhale, just let something more go. Just identifying points of tension in the body, perhaps clenching in the jaw or the shoulders might be tensed up. Just inviting that tension to release, giving you an escape route with the exhalation. mind's wandering off, just notice where does your mind tend to go. No judgment, just an observation, just an opportunity to learn something about yourself in this moment. It may not always be true. But when given space, where does your mind go? Allow your knees to come back together. Take your right hand and bring it over to meet your left hand as you just gently roll off of this prop, landing on your left side. You can pull the blanket out from underneath you. And we're gonna lay back down for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. So that might look like legs down the length of the mat. If there's any less movements, wiggles, or stretches that your body's calling for, go ahead and move through those now. The legs land at least a foot apart. Knees may splay open. If this brings any attention to your lower back, sweet, you've got a, a towel or a blanket, like I'm always saying, and you can just take that towel or a blanket and place it below your knees. That's going to alleviate some of the pressure in the lower back. I just press my heels into the ground a little bit to tuck my hips so that my lower back is closer to the ground. There's less of an arch, maybe no arch at all. Hands come to land off the body, palms face over to the sky, shoulders tuck under. That just feels nice and supportive for me. Palms are face open to the sky, symbol a mudra of receptivity. Allow your body to receive the full benefits of your effort here today. Head is up towards the sky, eyes closed if they haven't already. Alternately, if that's not comfortable, you can just have a soft gaze towards the sky, not looking at anything in particular, just letting them rest. And staying here in this reclining pose is called Shavasana. You can also use that blanket to cover up your body as body temperature does lower in this pose. I'm just coming up to seated so that I can speak to you instead of yelling from reclining and also to play you some Tibetan singing bowls. Oy. We'll start this practice like we did our grounding practice with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, audible sigh out through the mouth. the breathing to continue just in and out through the nose if that's available. 
Inviting the exhalations to become longer and deeper than your inhalations. Invite space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy and the tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth, a symbol, a mudra, a recept of <laughs> monkey mind, chitta vritti. You're just allowing that monkey mind to take a bit of a break. And all the muscles surrounding the lips and cheeks relax. Nose and nostrils relax, allowing air to gently flow through like waves lapping up to shore. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets, eyelids just barely touching. And the space between the eyebrows broadens as all the muscles in the forehead relax. Muscles surrounding the ears back of the head, top of the head, all relax. Neck and throat release. Shoulders and shoulder blades melt away. Upper arms and elbows, forearms and wrists relax. And palms, back of the hands, knuckles, fingers, fingertips, fingernail beds. Whole hands alive with vibration. Whole hands alive with creative potential. Rest and integrate all that you practice. Upper middle and lower back rest heavy and grounded into the earth below chest naturally rises and falls perhaps imperceptibly belly naturally rises and falls with the breath Glutes, pelvis, hips, rest heavy, pressed into the ground by gravity. Thighs and knees melt away. Lower legs and ankles release. The heels, arches, toe ball mounds, tops of the feet and toes all relax. Whole body rests. 
Whole body rest. Whole body rest. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. And know that in yoga, practice makes practice. Nothing more, nothing less. Gently allow your Inhalations to become longer and deeper than your exhalations. And that feeling of heaviness, replace the feeling of lightness and openness. As the attention shifts to the surface front side of the body. Every inhale lifting you upwards. Begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, reintroducing movement to the body. And head can gently rock side to side. Arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. And allow the knees to bend and roll over to whichever side feels natural, landing in a fetal position. Fully released and fully supported by the ground below you. Bring to mind any intention or dedication you may have set for class. Or take this opportunity to set one now. And if that intention inspires you, Take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. With eyes still closed or gently lowered, you can press your hands into the ground to come up to a seated position just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center. Today we worked on a series of heart and chest opening postures, shoulders as well. The first namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste is said out loud to everyone that held this space. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who joined me for practice today. Thanks to everyone on Facebook, John, Urban Queen, Alex, um, all you guys. Who else am I missing? Mehmet. Thank you to everyone on Twitch. Uh, to Oya Hydrangea, Cat Apocalypse for the Raid, M9, Bodhi, I appreciate you all. Anyone else who, um, who I missed, who's lurking, thank you too. Your energy also feeds into the class. Uh, that was great. Totally enjoyed it. I'm so glad. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, so great to have you here, Telluride. <laughs> yeah, so.
So as always, we always like to hang out a little bit after class just to answer any questions that people might have about the practice, be it the physical part of practice, the, um, the meditation, the lymphatic shaking, the anything, anything that I say, um, feel free to call me out and question me on. I'm going to regret saying that, no. But, um, but for real, I'm always open for a discussion here in chat. It's awesome because everyone kind of gets to benefit from the questions, um, but also um, you can totally message me privately through whispers on Twitch, through messages on Facebook, um, through DMs on Instagram is going to be the best place to reach me. And if you know me IRL, then uh, you can text me, of course. Did I say practice makes practice? I did. I met a man, he's, um, he lives up in, in Canada, uh, grandpa, grandpa E type fellow, and we did a yoga teacher training together. And he would always say that practice makes practice. And he was one of the students too, like me. And I was like, whoa, that's really good. He's like, yeah, you like that? He's like, I got it from one of my teachers. Like, you can use it. I'm like, thanks. And he's really awesome. He's like this super progressive, uh, super kind man with this big glowing Santa Claus beard. And he dips into frozen lakes every day. He does. He's like into cryotherapy. Is it cryotherapy? Um, but like Wim Hof type like. Yeah, and this is practice makes practice because there is no perfect in yoga. There's definitely no perfect. There's always another pose. Like anytime you're like, yeah, I got it. It's like, cool, here's the next step. Like there's no end. There's no end to it. <laughs> yeah, you're a great teacher. You've been teaching for 17 years. You look so young. Thank you. I have not been teaching for 17 years. I've been practicing for 17 years. I've been teaching for... It's, 2016 so five years but I took a year off when I first moved here to California so I've really been teaching for four years Does that makes sense credit where credits do I didn't teach for all of 2018 no nope. I didn't teach for all 2019 so 2019 2019 was a wash I was just like working a bunch of waitressing and bartending jobs and being miserable um, yeah, but still practicing, like I still went to a yoga studio to practice, um, almost every day, yeah, and that studio is closed now, because of the, well, in, directly, indirectly, because of the pandemic, it's closed, because they wouldn't be allowed to be open anyway, but also the owners decided to go, um, to go digital, which is, which I respect, and you gotta do what you gotta do, um, yeah, but, how long have you been on Twitch? Um, today is our 31st class together, friends. 31. So I streamed my first Twitch stream ever was the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And then I just did Sundays until the new year. So we had like four classes, I think four, four maybe five Sundays. And then when the new year started, I started streaming every day so yeah we're on class 31 oh so many raids today I'm getting so much like loving karma from my from my fitness community here hello mobility Gabe hello balanced bear brothers awesome awesome <laughs> I love it welcome we're just having tea post shavasana tea um, so yeah, we just finished our, our about, you know what? Today was almost a 90 minute practice. I love you guys. <laughs> Usually we do 75 minutes. Today was almost 90 minutes, but, um, yeah, for sure. It was like, I don't know. I was feeling it. And we, we did some, we did a bit nice long restorative pose at the end. Um, yeah. So hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. Uh, to get back to your question, M9. M9 easy. How long have I been on Twitch? That's how long. Um, so yeah, 31, 31, day, uh, 31 streams. Um, but I've, I'm familiar with Twitch for years and years because my husband streams. His name is Daydream Boy. And he's been streaming um, since, well, for a while now, but like consistently since the pandemic started last March. 
So I hang out with him and play video games on his streams sometimes. Mostly I commentate. Mostly I bring him coffee and talk to stream when he takes breaks and uh, just hang out the stream there. What is he playing? Um, he Last time I was really hanging out on stream he was playing Sekiro, but he finished that game and now for the new year I think he might be doing some like uh, what are they called? Super giant games type stuff. His stream call. Can I like link him here? I don't know. At Daydream Boy. No, that's that's not how it works. Yeah, it is how it works. No, it isn't. I don't know, but it's slash Daydream Boy. Yeah. Um, he streams every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 2 p.m. Pacific till 7 p.m. Pacific. Yes, this is Lucy. She is my child. She is Daydream. Daydream and Three-Eyed Tiger's child. She comes to hang out for a practice too, but she's just not always on camera. But today she hung out during our, during our twist, our seated twist.